how it starts. I guess you just go looking for something, you know? Something to fill the gaps, to, to ease the pressure. Why do we do it? Because it's exciting. It's thrilling. It's dangerous. You're living on the edge. You push yourself to the limit. You discover who you really are, what you're really capable of. And believe me, when it comes down to it, a human body is extraordinary. The pain is almost free. These days, everybody's addicted to something. Everybody's got some kind of monkey on their backs. But when that monkey starts strangling you, when you get sucked into that vortex of obsession, that's when it starts to get scary. Password? Boggle. Um, I guess it started about two and a half years ago. But you know, back then it was just an odd game of snakes and ladders with some mates, you know. Um, and then, yeah, I started hanging out with some real hardcore board gamers, you know. I mean, these guys are real monopoly fiends, you know, real, real twister heads. And um, yeah, I guess I just kind of fell into it, you know. I mean, it's not something you really realise is happening until, well, it's happening. <laughs> well, I guess the biggest turning point was when I bought my first dice. What people don't understand is just how addictive board games can be. Jake's just the tip of the iceberg, and he's choosing to deal with his problem now. But for some people, it can take years and years of BG abuse before they even realise they've got a problem. I've been working as a BG counsellor for about 18 months now. Before then, I was an addict myself. So I know exactly how much of a colossal stronghold the board game can have on you. It's a very fine line between casual board gaming and full-blown addiction. And the warning signs are virtually undetectable. You might be having a casual game of trouble at a party. The next thing you know, it's a weekly ritual. Pretty soon after that, it consumes your entire life. Yeah, now in my early teens, I really struggled with identity. I was always looking for a new scene, somewhere to belong. First night of gaming, I thought it was just gonna be a one-off. I remember the moment. I'd just gotten out of the big house. My properties were in ruin. I was literally down in my last 20, and I knew once I hit the street, I was done for. I had to take out a fourth mortgage just to get by. And then I had this epiphany. I knew who I was, and I knew what I was. I'm Sean. And I'm the boot. No, it's not a new thing. Okay, board gaming has been around for a lot longer than people realise, and I think it's as culturally significant as the discovery of fire or the invention of the wheel. Now, there's research to suggest that primitive man was playing what can only be described as an ancient form of hungry, hungry hippos. I mean, it differed from the modern version in that the hippos were real. So the death toll was a lot higher. But the premise is the same. Left foot yellow. You gotta work hard, you gotta train hard. It requires complete commitment to reach an elite level. Yeah, just, oh. Do I ever worry about the long-term effects? Uh, sure, I mean, you hear stories, strains, sprains, breaks. Uh, that's just the beginning. I, I know this guy who uh, slipped a disc doing a red, green, yellow, multiple hand cross manoeuvre. What happen if you put left hand green and right hand red? What happens? This is what happens, Dylan, this. You know, it's no more risky than any other game. I mean, look at what happened at the International Scrabble Championships in Prague last year. I mean, that guy's still in hospital. All right. No. Moustache. Guess who? It could be you.
Board gaming. Don't play around with it. Spoken by Jay Sargent for the Board Gaming Association Australia. I don't think the shock advertising does anything more than push the issue further underground. Oh, I don't really worry about the warnings. They only put them on there for the right-wing conservative, anally retentive, board gaming, hating, great unwashed in their suppressed utopias. Thumb up. Thumb up, Phil. <laughs> Some people can handle it, you know? Others just can't. It completely takes over. And they stop rolling the dice. And the dice starts rolling them. I've always been a very exuberant, outgoing person. I find the way most people choose to express themselves tedious and mundane. I mean, why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? Why be beige when you can be scarlet? They get seduced, romanced into believing the board is their kingdom and the game is life. Miss White! In the conservatory! With the candlestick! And when the game follows you into the real world, that's when it's gone too far. It's not something that ever fully leaves you, you know? I mean, even now I still feel the pull of the game, the need to roll the dice. But you learn to manage it, to work through it. <laughs> I keep this as a reminder of, of how far I've come, where I've been. If I can resist the urge to roll on a daily basis. Then I can do anything.